Welcome to the Aftermarket Report, Wall Street News with Vegas and Jim, Sunday's edition. Supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. And Miss Vegas has a wonderful watch list for us today. Yeah, good day everyone. Hope you're enjoying your weekend. And this is Sunday's update for your ideas for this week. And so we're going to talk about GHSI, Tesla, Saba, McDonald's, CRWD, and RADA. So we will start with GHSI, which is Guardian Health Sciences. And, you know, this company is, uh, they're into monitoring numerous eye diseases. They're out actually in San Diego. And, you know, they're into a lot of innovative um, diagnostics and various technologies, specifically, obviously, for the eye. And of course, you know, your eyes are important because without them, can't read a chart, can't even trade. So um, with regards to this particular stock, um, what I do like about it is that it had a nice volume surge, also had a nice pocket pivot, and I really like the pocket pivot. So in my opinion at this time, this chart is really nice even for a swing trade. Um, and I'm gonna let Jim talk about the next couple of supports and resistances currently closed around you know 35.7 so still hold you know still cheap in my opinion and has room for this to go higher and i'll let jim talk about the supports and resistances on ghsi yes i'm out there eyeing you right now and if you're new to our to our youtube channel please subscribe and spank that bell for us but we're going to pull up the chart right now g and it, this has been a nice little runner here for a few days. I'm going to pull up the 10-day chart or the 20-day. We had a nice little pop on it back here on back on 12-17. It had like a three-day run and pulled back and consolidated. And then we broke that resistance level, which was right around 24-78, and created a new high. Then she pulled back the next day, and that was on uh, right before New Year's Day. And then she had a nice little run on Thursday, and then the big run came on Friday. So I got three different supports on this chart right now, and I'll bring this to a daily one minute. First support is going to be a low strong buy if it decides to pull back. I do expect a small little pullback maybe. We did have a lower high after hours, and it did break out after hours. So the momentum and the buyers are still in here, and they're going to be watching it closely on Monday. Low support is going to be right around the 32 to 33.5 area, somewhere down in this area here. I've got it tagged. The second support is going to be right here at 36, where it hit some resistance, pulled back to that support level, and then bounced on up, hit it again, pulled back to the lower part of that support that I was talking about, and then we run up and broke that resistance and pulled back again. So that's why I'm calling that 33.41 a real strong support, just in case it decides to knife and then start a retracement bounce and that's about 50 percent down from the uh from the breakout and that's kind of the retracement i like to see then the first support is going to be here at 39.64 so it'll definitely touch that and then bounce up in the resistance that we're going to have to break i've chatted in the uh, stock twits 47.17 but i'm going to adjust that right here to right around 45.47 45.50 let me 4551 area and this year's trend lines I'm going to be using yellow I change them every year and I will keep my red uh, lines for strong targets of support or strong targets of resistance so what we got to do is break that 4551 to go to 47 and that's going to be the hard resistance right there at 4717 if we can bust past that we'll get up to the 50 zone but always remember um, in times like now, the market can be kind of twitchy due to the, the conflict over in the Middle East with Iran. So you just have to kind of be patient with some of these trades and just follow the trends. And we had a couple, we had a good one uh, last Friday that had a good trend that we'll be talking about later. The next stock we're going to bring up is going to be Tesla. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? Again, Tesla, I mean, this stock just keeps making new 52 week highs higher and higher i mean if you even go back to like december the 10th i mean the stock high of day was at 350 so can you believe in less than one month it went up over a hundred dollars per share on tesla i mean this is just incredible incredible run 
and it's just non-stop. You know, Tesla also has a pocket pivot, and I just want to briefly touch on why I like the pocket pivot so much. I mean, the pocket pivot is usually formed when the stock is strong, and it's usually coming up and off through the 10-day or 50-day moving average, sometimes in both. And, you know, the pocket pivot is usually comes with a kind of, you know, footprint. And, you know, when you see that, it kind of means that the volume is higher than the highest down volume in the last 10 days. And um, this is a good indicator, you know, that there is strength in the stock. And, you know, it's very important to pay attention to these because it is trying to show you that the stock has the potential to probably go higher again. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about the chart in a, just a minute. Uh, but as you can see, you know, Tesla also had some, you know, news again, and that they've now discounted the Model 3s another $8,000 because they got um, securing additional um, government subsidies in China. So this is actually about, comes down to about $42,911. And this is great. I mean, listen, uh, don't forget, um, they have also um, the electric vehicle is going to roll out more cars in Shanghai on Jan 7th, which is Tuesday. So again, you could see some more hype on Tesla come Tuesday. So Jim, let's hear about this Tesla. Yeah, and that plant that they got in China is pushing out 1,000 cars a week. So they're going to they're going to try to hit the demand. And with this subsidy, I think it's a good offer. Tesla's not going to lose anything about it. So that's another bonus there. So Tesla chart itself has had a very beautiful run. It had a great breakout on Friday off of earnings and then kind of pulled back the rest of the day, kind of found a support level at 440. It closed at 443.01, and after hours it pulled back a little bit more. I'm going to put this red line support right here at 435.13. I think that was a previous high that we had before the breakout. So that's going to be kind of your low little spot right there. And I'm going to draw that in there right now. But you can see we had that little resistance right here. And she pulled back a couple of days. Then she ran up on the, the, the first of the year or the second of the year, third, and popped up. And that, that's just a beautiful chart. So we're going to pull up the daily one minute. And we're going to try to find a little spot. We have that low support here at 435.64. I don't want to see it go any lower than that. It did pull back and hit that little spot right there, and I showed you the resistance on it about five days back. So that's going to be a solid support level. If it pulls back to that, it should rebounce, but you never know, you know. Cohen came out here and downgraded it to $210, and I laughed that off. I mean, it did pull back hard and nasty just off that news, and I think it was just, him probably shorten it and getting back in it you never can tell with these con artists but he did say 210 and it was just a joke so i'm thinking that first support is going to be here at 435.64 and that a second one's going to be right around this area between 439.81 and i'm going to draw a trend line right there and this 441.05 and the resistance that we need to break is going to be the 451.06 but after this nice extension run that it did have from the 421.50 all the way to 454, I mean, that's almost it's a 30 some dollar bounce. It's going to have to consolidate a little bit. And you do have a descending pattern with lower highs, which kind of tell me that it could pull back a little bit more on Monday. And you can see what I mean by the descending highs. I'll just draw that in here. This is what you call, and I'm, you know, I'm talking about a lot about it in the room, different patterns to watch for. This is a descending pattern, and that's my reason for it to maybe pull back to this 435.64. I don't think it can get back down here to the lower levels, but if it goes anywhere below that, I'd start eyeing it and getting in the trade. And maybe if you can't afford it, you can always look at options. And that's going to be Tesla. Remember, the hard resistance to break is going to be the 451.06. And then you can get up to that 454, which you, everybody remembers that old engine. At 454 could really run. So the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Sava, the play of the week. Sava. Yeah, well, you know what? This is a beautiful trade. I mean, we did give this alert in our chat. Again, you're welcome to come to our chat for, even for a free trial. I mean, you would have 
if you were in there, you would have definitely, definitely benefited from this trade. Um, you know, Sava is uh, Cassava Sciences, and uh, you know this company. Uh, they're focused on you know Alzheimer diseases. You know, Alzheimer's. So many people have Alzheimer's. It's obviously uncurable at this time, and they are really looking to have some sort of cure or treatment that can help to treat this. Uh, challenging disease that so many people uh, deal with in their own families and uh, it's sad to see someone that has Alzheimer's so um, I'm really hoping that you know down the road this company um, can have some sort of um, news on some upcoming drugs that they're working on but um, you know Sava <coughs> excuse me had a new 52 week high and you know this was coming through um, our scanner as well and uh, when I took a look at the chart, I thought, wow, this hasn't had, I mean, if you guys look back, this stock was below $2 at one time. And it's had a major, major move. And uh, gave the alert in chat, actually at $7. You know, maybe people swing traded this from before. And if you did, congratulations to you. Um, great trade. Uh, but I noticed it really more, it took a, a lot closer look on Thursday. And said, this is ready for a nice swing. And I gave the resistance of 1033. And you know what? The next day, boom, took off and went all the way to 1095. So it was a great trade, th over 30% gains for some people. Some people made 20%. Some people just day traded it and they were happy with that. So many ways you could have traded this, but I really just loved the swing trade and that the trade plan worked and came through. So definitely don't take this off your radar because. Um, you know, it had a strong close. It still closed over the 52-week high. Still has this pocket pivot. It had a beautiful volume surge also. And it also broke out. So I wouldn't take this off your watch list. And Jim, you could talk to us about some supports and resistances on Sava because it's one to still not ignore and one to keep an eye on. Um, I think definitely longer term. Can I see further upside continuation of this for this company? In my opinion, yes, I won't be surprised that uh, this company <clears throat> is going to have um, a higher price tag longer term. Uh, maybe throughout 2020, we could see some, some of this uh, stock growing and uh, just keep a watch on it. I don't have any shares of the stock at this time. I just swing traded it and then that was that. Um, but I'm no longer in it at this time. I will be watching it again tomorrow and take a look and uh we'll see from there what the stock is going how it's going to perform jim let's hear about what you think yeah this was very popular on social media i noticed it right out of the gate that everybody was talking about it on stock twits which we really appreciate howard and the other people that have formed that website and also twitter we'll, i'll post the link on that you can follow us on twitter but it's always good to be watching social media and how they react to some of these stocks and always do your homework, trade at your own risk. But we do have a support level here at 934 on the, on the, you can see the nice little climb it's had for two weeks. It's pulled back to a trend line right here a few times. So we're going to put a low support right in here, right around the 661 area. I want to keep that in mind. That's going to be a strong buy if it ever dips on down to that area. I'm going to put that in red real fast. But I'm going to also pull up now the, the daily three-minute. Just kind of look at it, see if there's anything I missed. Friday, we did have an ascending triangle breakout on it. I mentioned it in the room. I said, just, and that was after the initial breakout that just took off like a monster from 680 down here and ran all the way up to 888, created a little resistance, had another ascending triangle within ascending triangle, and it, then it went ahead and broke out of that. So these are two different patterns that I'm showing right now. We have an ascending triangle and we have a descending triangle where it pulled back and hit this three different times with lower highs. So when you're in, when you notice that first lower high, that might be a pretty good time to exit, take the trade, and maybe wait for it to pull back to the daily 200 EMA. That's a rule on a breakout stock. I use this moving average very often I mentioned it five or six times a day on these breakout stocks when they pull back they bounce off at 200 EMA so write that down put it on your chart 
and respect that. I used the 34 and also used the 9. Most of the day after the breakout, it did res we had, did have the squeeze right here where they just the 9 took above the 34 and the 200. And it did respect that most of the day there until it started showing disrespect. And then it did bounce back up and created a lower high. So that was your exit spot. You see this quite common. It's, a, it's very, very common. And when you see that second bounce go up to a lower high, take your profit. Get out of the trade. You always have another chance to get in it. And it did pull back three different times down here to the support level. So I'm calling this 934 as your first support. Your second one's going to be, and that was also out of that, that ascending triangle breakout. The second ascending triangle, which is right in here, is at 888. And then we're going to hit right on the bottom of that for your third one at 850. So those are the three support levels, two support levels. Right now we're just kind of hovering here at that strong resistance, strong support. And your third one, you know, I could, it's kind of hard to say because it had such a big spike right here, but I'm going to go in between the smaller candles and the big engulfing candles and put this down at your third support at 779. I'm going to mark that in a red line. I've been drawing these trend lines for over 15 years. I kind of know what I'm talking about. I have a pretty good accuracy rating, but I'm not always 100%. You got to watch the, the, as, as Tony would say in our room, you got to watch the price action and that money flow. And then keeping an eye on social media and how they're talking about it. And you'll probably have some skinny people out there trying to short it. But I don't think if it does get shorted, that 779 is going to be your strong buy. Your second, third, second support, third support. Well, your, your, this is going to be your first, that 934, 888. 851 and then a solid strong buy at the 779 which I'm going to call your low support and we did have another ascending triangle right down here before that that other breakout as you can see the higher lows to a resistance level right here right around seven bucks so that's Sava keep a real close eye on this one I'm sure you can make money on this Monday and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be my favorite hamburger the Big Mac McDonald's Oh, yeah. Well, you know, McDonald's, um, we love trading this one here and uh, haven't really traded it in a little while, but we did trade it uh, last week and we were uh, from the option side and we made over 100% gains on that. I mean, it had a beautiful run and uh, you can see here that it went from, uh, you know, over $2 a share on January 2nd. And, um, you know, I think you should keep a watch on McDonald's because it's looking for a continuation. So I don't have, um, I do have some new McDonald's swings. Let me just see which ones I have here. But the reason we like the McDonald's right now for a potential continuation is, you know, McDonald's had pulled back below this $200. So right now I have the um, 205s that expired January 17th. And also we have the $200 ones for January 17th. So we still have a few weeks ahead of us for before those ones expire. Now, McDonald's, if you notice here, it is definitely um, had now become overbought and um, looking for this type of an expansion in the stock. And it also had a bit of an inside day. So I do like to follow these kind of trend patterns and uh, McDonald's is looking for some form of continuation come this week. So definitely have this on your watch list, especially if you're trading it on the options angle. I won't be surprised to see McDonald's get back to like 205 uh, in the next couple of trading sessions. Um, I mean, we've seen this stock uh, a lot higher uh, in the past. And uh, if you guys remember back in October, I mean, this was around $208. So you know, it's not impossible for this Big Mac to get back on track. So, Jim, let's hear about McDonald's chart because it's looking pretty nice. Yep. Just in case you're wondering what kind of chart I'm using, I'm using the TTM Squeeze Chart by John Carter. And I like using it because it shows trends and it shows downtrends. And along with my support level and my moving averages, that's basically how I trade. Everybody has their own strategy. And always work with a strategy that works best for you. But we have had a nice uphill climb on this last year in 2019 from 173 all the way up to 221. 
And then right at the end of the year, we started pulling back because of in-house earnings. Sales were down, which I that put a lot of contribute to that China uh, uh, protesters going on over there in China. China eats a lot of Big Macs. So they did pull back, and we've had a double bottom down here. We did have like kind of little head and shoulders, but it did pull back to a support level at 190, 191, 99, 192. And I'm going to put that trend line in there just in case. And we are below the 200, and we just broke out of the 200 last week. So it's showing signs of bullishness. We are starting to climb back up to regain some of that balance. And that trend line is right here. You can see where we pull back right here, and we run up, and we've held that support level all the way up to that 197.06 area. So that's going to be your low, low support, and I can draw that trend line right here. And you can see where it kind of matches up, which is a double confirmation right there at 196.53. I'm talking about was at 196.53 right here. This little spot right in here where she kind of hit and pulled back and hit that trend line. And she's pulled back and hit that trend line quite a bit ever since. So the resistance that we're going to have to break, let's go ahead and pull this up to a 20-day. I want to look at the 20 day one hour it kind of tells me a story also we do have a support level right here I mean, yep we got there on the dollar sign and that's going to be there at there at 198.20 so we have three supports that we're going to look at maybe a low strong buy at the 196.53 if it does dip down that area resistance to break is going to be this 281 and I'm going to see that's pretty strong right there and she did pull back pretty much that morning, so that would have been a nice little buy. And I think we have to pay really have to pay attention to the conflict overseas because that can kind of determine how the spy is going to run. Any kind of tweets that come out, you might hear some tweets. Something might happen next week. So always play with caution in this kind of kind of arena. That 199.71 is going to be your first support. Your second one is going to be right here at 199.08. And then that third one's going to be this double top, triple top breakout at 198.17. 198.17. That's what I'm going to turn into a red line. That's going to be very important for me if I want to jump into the trade. Instead, this could go ahead. Like I said, it's on an up, upward trend right now. And you did have a, a, a pennant flag on, on Friday after the pullback. It did create a pennant flag. As you, I'm going to draw that up and show you what I mean by pennant flag magnify this up a little bit and one thing about a room I'm all, we're always trying to teach and we have great traders in there but this is what you would call a pennant flag and she did kind of had that little ugly pull back and then bam she retraced and created that flag so it still can go back up or it could pull back to this support level Remember, 198.20 is going to be my place where I think I want to get into the trade. It breaks resistance of two. If it starts to show momentum and bounces up and pauses for a double top at 281, you could see a nice little, little bitty pullback to this support level of 216 and then bounce up for the third time and break that resistance level. Or it could just go ahead and break out of this flag and run up pre-market and this 281 would become your solid support. And that's McDonald's, our kind of place. And once a year I go to McDonald's. I don't eat there quite frequently, but the person that's behind me gets a free Big Mac or a free meal every time I do that. And I do that every year. I did it this year at the airport, or last year at the airport down in Texas. And who knows what I'm going to do this year. And yeah, that, well, don't forget McDonald's also has the earnings, Gen 21, so... Yeah. CR well, if you posted we'll be talking about it again exactly next CRWD is our next one CrowdStrike these are going into the defensive mode so always have your great defensive watch list CRWD CRWD yeah, so well we know about what's happening with the uh, what's happening in the uh, obviously a lot of people are jumping into the defense sector and to oil stocks and some gold stocks and you know CrowdStrike 
Um, you know, they have also a conference coming up. They're going to be in San Francisco in February. And, you know, CrowdStrike is in various, various different um, products. And uh, if you guys want to check it out, they have a really good website. But, you know, this company is into cybersecurity. And uh, they have over, I don't know, they have like amazing cutting edge technology. They have apparently 35,000 breaches that are stopped every year. And they're not into just cutting edge technology, but they're into a crowdsourced approach to cybersecurity. Yep. And they have more than 2 trillion events a week that stop 350,000 breaches a year. So um, this is just phenomenal. If you want to learn more about this company, you can check out their website, but I mean, they're into so many different things. So. Um, you can, right now, CRWD is hot. It also had um, the CEO was on Jim Cramer the other day. You know, this company, just so you know, hasn't been around that long. Like they've only been, they've founded in 2011. And, um, you know, they wanted to reinvent how security for the cloud era. And, um, you know, this is, they have what they call the Falcon platform. And uh, this is phenomenal product. And they're into, um, you know, the Internet of Things. They have 10 different cloud modules on the Falcon platform and uh, with the sales as a service subscription model. So um, they have fantastic security endpoints that obviously help to detect any threat and also some intelligence. So very good stock to watch right now considering what's going on in the world. Um, and so CRWD is hot and we definitely have options in play on CRWD. So the ones we have right now, and then Jim's gonna talk about the chart. So we do see that there's been a lot of volatility on CRWD. Um, and right now we have, there's also, uh, I think Citadel took a, had a form four on the stock as well. And the option we have right now on CRWD, let me just locate the one we have. We have the January 17, $51 strike. So those are the ones we have paid $215 for one of those. And that's again, the January 17 expiry, $51 strike. So those are the ones we have at the moment because it's a swing trade. And so we're not in a rush to you know, buy it and then sell it right away. Unless of course it moves immensely and people make 100% or 50%. You know, you don't always have to expect these thousand percent runners. Uh, definitely, um, you know, when you have good profits, 30% or plus, you should be taking the money, some money off the table. Um, the other thing too, I wanna to mention on CRWD that was mentioned by one of the analysts at Needham, uh, they did mention that they have rapid growth and that this company, CRWD, CrowdStrike, is delivering significant leverage to the business model. And he said also for 2020, he feels that it's the single best idea in security and that there is a major share opportunities in a very competitive environment. Longer term, the buy rating and targets from the analysts at Neham is actually $92. Wow, that's quite quite a huge move here. We're looking for almost, wow, longer term, this could be like 100% stock, you know, from where it's kind of trading today. So this is just amazing. So, you know, this could be even something some people may like to purchase the stock for a longer term hold. And of course, we're not licensed advisors, but do your own due diligence, speak to a licensed professional before you make your own decisions or do your own research and decide for you if this is the kind of stock you're interested in buying at these levels to hold for longer term with the anticipated growth and need for this kind of product on the market. Jim, over to you. I spotted an ascending triangle out on this. This is, you know, this is a cyber war uh, stock that you want to keep watch. There's all kinds of different defense plays, and this is just a cyber one right here. But we do have an ascending triangle that broke out on the bottom here. 
and it broke out from 46.32 and then Friday it had the big bounce on the engulfing candles off the trend line that I drew off that bottom part of the lower highs. So, and the resistance on that was to break was the 53, 50.35. I show this a lot every day in the room and we're going to pull up the year's chart to show you how much this thing's oversold. We had a high up here right around 101.88 and here we are down 50% on the stock right now. And we did have a nice little pop of it right here. So we're going to have a long resistance right around the 60.03 area. It's right around where the 200 is. And let me draw this 200 EMA. And I'm going to put that dollar sign. That's going to be a match up right there to about where that is. So that's our target to go long on this stock. Jim Cramer talked about this Friday also, so it's going to have a little bit of buzz out there in social media land. Resistance to break is going to be this 5184 area. And then we've got a little pivot point. Well, pullback, if it decides to pull back, it's going to be part of that trend line. And I'm going to pull that up here on a 20 day in a second. But I'm trying to find another little spot here where I think it can pull back, and that's going to be that 40. 851 as I was pulling up this 4896 is going to be probably another little spot but I said 4851 right here also so let's pull this chart back up resistance to break that we're going to have on it's going to be two of them it's going to be at 5208 is going to be a strong one but I've got to finish writing this up so I'm going to go back to this chart Bring us up on a 20 day. Let's see if I can find another spot in here. Right about, I'm thinking right about in 5403. I'll pull up the 20 day one hour. I'll draw this trend line. Exactly how I discovered this ascending triangle. That third touch right down here at 4874. It lands right at 4885 that I've marked. And we have another support level right in here. You see where we've topped out a few times. Just couldn't quite break it. So we're going to go a little bit lower on that. No, right about there. I think that's a good spot right in there, right around 4054. I need to get back up here and right, right there. The number's never the same. It's always a center or two off. <clears throat> but we did touch that many a times five six times right there and even that engulfing candle on the hour stopped right there and moved on to the other one we got a resistance to break here at 40 5152 for 5142 to bring it on up to that 5148 and then you've got a couple other resistances on past that like this one right here i'm basing it on this hour chart right there at 5255 and then that strong one right here at 5339 so we've got one support, and I'm going to dig in here and try to find me another support level. That's going to be right in here. I'm seeing this right here touching a lot of bases here. Bam! Right there at 49.58. So this is how we're going to look at it. We've got a strong support right here. That's the ascending triangle. That's where I think it can pull back and bounce back up. And that's going to be that 5046. That's about a 60, 70, 70 some cent drop. And if it decides to pull back there right at open and break the resistance level here at 5142, you're off to the races to these new resistances up here. Feel free to always pause these videos and write these numbers down. But always remember that it comes from I Love Stocks. And that 5046 is going to be your strong support. And I do have a couple others that are moving on down here. Write them down and then the resistance is to break. I'm sure this thing will easily get back to 54 bucks within a week or so. And that's CRWD and another defense stock that's a penny stock that we're going to talk about. It's going to be RADA, R-A-D-A. Yes, and you guys know I'm a huge fan of Israeli technology. I think they're so advanced and uh, they are big suppliers to many many countries around the world that purchase their technology and rata is one of them 
Um, you know, so I really like Rata here. It, it's got support here at the 50 day, also has the nice pocket pivot, which I did talk about earlier with that nice footprint that you want to see some continuation in the stock. You know, right now, like I said, with everything going on, uh, Rata is one of those stocks that you want to watch because it could have some continuation with all the uh, hype going on with the news so um, around the world. So definitely another defense play to watch. Uh, we also have on Rata, let me just take a look here really quick. I think we did have, we did see a beautiful um, pocket pivot uh, and Jim talked about the pivot, uh, the pivot points. Uh, they also, you know, um, Rata is so advanced. I mean, I don't have any, I was just going to see if I have options on this, but I don't. Um, but I will be definitely watching the stock for continuation. So I do like it for a swing trade. I don't know what it's going to do tomorrow, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a continuation on this because it's had a multi-top on the actual chart. So definitely watch this stock. The float is not even huge. I mean, you know, 35.9 million, it's not that huge. Um, they did have also a new director, Joseph Wise, who's joined the company and he's now part of the board. And uh, he is, um, you know, we know Rada has been around for a long time, but this gentleman who, who they brought in, Joseph Wise, he was uh, working in the aerospace industry um, he's done a lot of commercial and defense markets. He also uh, was a Navy captain, and uh, he was very involved with the military and the artificial intelligence and the defense systems and the paramilitary and law enforcement. So he's got a ton of experience. So he's now coming over to um, the board, and he also has a degree from the Technion Israeli Institute and uh, that is uh, extremely, extremely prestigious when you graduate from that university. So this gentleman comes with tons of experience, a great addition to RADA. You know, long, you know RADA is uh, in the high growth market and they are very active in military protection, surveillance, border patrol and counter drone applications. So um, keep a watch on this stock. Uh, throughout the week because I won't be surprised to see this keep going up. Jim, your thoughts on RADA? Well, I was just looking through here through the website and look at all these jobs they got here in Maryland for RADA. You know, pro oh, program yeah. manager, yeah, payable bookkeeper, you got uh, develop manager, finance director, cyber systems engineer. I mean, it just list goes on. So if you're out looking for a job or you know someone in the family, it might be a place to look, you know. And uh, if you're especially from Maryland, but let's look at the chart right now. Also, it's a radar detector, you know, company. And I'm I'm bullish on this stock. I've been bullish. We talk about it a lot. It has its ups and has its pullbacks. You know, what goes up comes back down. But we've had the triple top. We're getting ready for a triple top breakout here at 561. Got a low support pivot point on a 20 day one hour at 537. I think it can pull back to that area. If it does, that's going to probably be, well, it could pull back just a little bit more, maybe somewhere right around just 531. But I'm going to keep that, you know, I've already charted this up at 537. So I think that's going to be your pivot point on a 20 day chart. Resistance to break is going to be the 561 to carry it up to 567. Let's pull up the yearly and just have a look at the yearly. We're in a channel. You can see the channel going diagonally here, and we're just ready to break that triple top. And it looks like we tried to touch it once before, so we've kind of hit the triple top. But here on the pullback, it's going it's got a new triple top that it wants to break. And if we can break past this 567, we'll go to 580 and create newer highs. It also is an ascending triangle. Let me point that out to you here. So we are getting to the point where it can probably break out. And I'm just going to probably pull it from right here on up with that ascending triangle started right here, right under that 567 mark, right about in there. So that's a beautiful, I mean, it could squeeze out for a couple more days or it can, with the news, it could be a catalyst to break that resistance level at 567. The pivot point on that 20 day is 537 and the low support is going to be right here at 507. 
keep right on on your eyes on your screen but this is a beautiful little i mean look at that chart on a yearly i mean it's nice. just beautiful i mean they don't get any better than that especially when they have a, like a four or five month sending triangle on them i mean it could squeeze out later but i think with the news that's coming in this could break out past that 567 if it gets the social media's attention the low floaters won't be jumping on it as much as you'd think but I mean, this is a penny stock, and they might just want to take advantage of the run. And that's the last one for I Love Stocks, Sunday's report. Miss Vegas probably has more to say, but I want to just mention our website right here. We've got these little icons on the side. We've got a Twitty Bird right there that takes you to Twitter. We're at 998. We traded, it looks to me like, eight more followers here in the last couple of days since I looked at it last. And we want to bring this up to a thousand within a month. I think that's easy, easy said and done. But let's give it a let's give it a try. So please, if you're new to our channel, subscribe to our Stock Twits page. We also have our Stock Twits. Oh, excuse me, Stock <laughs> Twitter page. At, we also have Stock Twits here. You can follow us on there, Pinterest, and then our YouTube channel. Please subscribe and ring that bell. In Miss Vegas? Well, you know what? Expect an uh, interesting week. Uh, you know, I can for sure we'll see the defense stocks in play, oil stocks will be in play, people trading gold. So definitely keep those in mind. And uh, also, you know, we plan to do a lot more new videos um, throughout the week and uh, bring you a lot new content for 2020. We have so much planned in our calendar and really excited to uh, release new videos separate from charts that's going to help especially new people learn more about stocks and about different tools out on the market that can help you become better and uh, you know learn also what's out there because not everyone knows all these tools that are out there in the market and uh, you just learn with time you know, find out about different websites and different tools or different strategies so definitely will be doing a lot of really great videos to help you all so thank you so much for following, liking, subscribing. And please hit the like button, subscribe, smash the bell. And uh, we'll look to a smashing 2020 with everybody and wishing everyone a fabulous, fabulous green year. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. I Love Stocks supports our military. So thumbs up to you guys out there and gals that, that put on the uniform and, and try to create peace throughout the world. And that's it for I Love Stocks. Today's date is January the 5th, 2020, and we love stocks.